Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. It's another sunny day here in Kisumu. I don't know where you are watching this particular video from. But it is my hope that it's going to find you in good health. For those who've been following this channel for a long time, at the peak of the campaigns for the Kiamba parliamentary by election, I opined on this channel that Moses Korea was going to emerge as the biggest loser should the UDA candidate win the seat. And I also did a specific video on how a clever William Samuel Ruto was scheming for the downfall of Moses Korea. I'm going to put that particular video in the comments section. I'm actually going to pin it. So after watching this video, just go down for those who missed it. The first comment, I'm going to share the link to that video so that you can watch. And Moses Korea, as we speak today, is clearly out to revenge. So in this video today, I want us to analyze a statement which Moses Korea made yesterday in Kandara constituency. But before we do that, if you're watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Let me put this request to you guys. Kindly give this particular video a thumbs up. And for those who can share, please share it in your groups. And for those who have not yet joined the channel membership, just click that join button you see there. And the process is direct. Now, let us get back to the main issues. During the Kemba parliamentary by election campaigns, Moses Kuria wanted to sponsor a candidate. Then from nowhere, the DP tried prevailing on him, upon him, not to sponsor a candidate. But he insisted. Before he knew, that candidate had been prevailed upon by the deputy president and he withdrew from the race. That was one of the major miscalculations Moses Korea made. Because before that, Moses Korea had won in Georgia. Moses Korea had won several other seats, civic seats, in the Lajamon Kenya region. His path, political path, was clear. People had started identified, identifying themselves. People had started identifying themselves with, the, with his party, PEP, People's Empowerment Party. But after the Kiamba parliamentary by election, something is clearly happening to Moses Korea. Rijadi Gashagwa has emerged now as the UDA point person from that region. And it's also clear that William Ruto is now focusing more on his party, the UDA. So Moses Korea made this statement. Listen closely. That if you're not careful as Mount Kenya region, we are going to be spectators of Masemeh Judab between Golmahia and AFC Lopards. We are going to be like spectators of the Olympics to see other people in the game and we are not in the game. It is not possible and it's not practical, it's not acceptable at all. And we, we should not be called tribalists when we say we need a party to advance the agenda of our religion. That's a reality. Now from those comments, it is clear that Moses Korea is keen on pushing for a central Kenya or larger Mount Kenya region political party. Moses Korea is not alone in that scheme. Several other individuals from the larger Mount Kenya region are pushing for their own political party. And one such individual is Mwangi Kiunjuri. Mwangi Kiunjuri and Moses Korea were front runners for the position of the running mate in William Ruto's camp. But now they are speaking different language. They want their own political party. The head resort, mutapereka kureenu, erufumiabiri kwa laila, erufumiatatu kwa musalia, erufumiabiri kwa kalonzo, ata mukipelekea iyo igine yote, William Samuai Ruto, bado, hata pita laudi ya kwanza. There will be a rerun. Na di rerun ikifanyika, diye njini mutajua chindaenu. Kwa sababu, hawa wegina wataungana, because no one can claim this country. Kupata more than 110 foot, nini, seats. Nakula inafanyika raudibiri. 
The first round ni ile inakuwa mass. Ile kula inawekwa kwa debe, ile popular vote. You can even get 10 million. Lakini ukifika bunge unatawala na wajumbe. Kwa hivyo wala watu watajipanga Laila mtamuona tu amezunguka na Laila hajai kuwa nje ya serikali. Laila unafurusha anafurusha anarudi kwa moi anapewa nusu mkate. Anafurusha anafurusha anarudi kwa kebake anapewa nusu mkate. Anafurusha anafurusha anakuja na hard shake uhuru Kenyatta bado Laila kwa serikali. You think Laila is stupid? Hata wakati huu Laila atajipanga. Nyinyi watu ya rekipe mkikaa Musari atajipanga ANC. Kalonzo ajipange waipa. Mtu anaitwa Maedreo Chap Chap. Mutua mnamuona ka state house. Mnajua mutua kona viti ngapi? So there is a mission to ensure that Mount Kenya is scattered. That our forts are scattered. Na hapo diyo heshima yetu itaishia. Na kwa hiyo si tunasema tutasimama. Na mimi ndasukuma TSP to the head. I can assure you even if I'll be the last man studying. I pull, uh, nitapiga na baka mwisho. Na hakuna mutu wabaye afikirie kwa roho lake na, yake na wafikirie yake. Ati TSP tafunga mirango. Hakuna. That will never happen. So the question which I'm asking myself, which probably you can help me understand, why do you think Moses Korea is pushing for a Mount Kenya based political party? Because let's face it, Jubilee was a national party because of Ruto and the brigades. The moment President Ruto Kenyatta kicked out William Ruto from Jubilee party, then Jubilee party kind of remained a more of Mount Kenya region political party. So if these guys were serious, then what they ought to have done was to insist on the president to, to take control of Jubilee party and make Jubilee party a Mount Kenya political party. But that did not happen. Why do you think Moses Kura is now pushing for a central Kenya or larger Mount Kenya region based political party? Maybe two reasons. Number one, I think he's trying to put pressure on the DP to open negotiations with him. So the truth of the matter is that Moses Korea had emerged as a key player around the deputy president. That's the fact you can't deny. But the moment his party was kicked out in Kiamba, Ruto started pushing for UDA. But now he's coming with another political party. And I'm sure the DP would not want a situation where Moses Kura is pulling this direction, Mwangi Kiyunjuri pushing this direction, and he's also pushing this direction. So probably he's doing this so that the deputy president can negotiate this. The second possible reason is that as things stand today, and based on what Moses Kura was saying there, because he's saying he doesn't care whether he's part of the government now or even the future, what Moses Kura is suggesting is that he's willing to enter into any alliance or is willing to open any negotiations with any political formation, either Mudafadi, even Rel Udinga, or even any other person. But what was the objective of Moses Kuria's statement in Kandara? For those who listen to it very closely, why do you think he's pushing for this regional party? Well, the deputy president is on record of pushing for a national party. In my view, four or five. Number one, I think Moses Kuria's statement was about justifying the need for more political parties. He was trying to justify to the people of the larger Mount Kenya region why they need their own political party. And the truth of the matter is that someone like uh, Alfred Mutua has his own political party. He's been able to negotiate using that party. Right? Mwangi Kiyujuri is also suggesting that they need a political party so that when time for negotiations come, then they can also negotiate. The truth of the matter is that if today Ruto were to win the presidency using UDA and UDA sweeps the larger Mount Kenya region, it means the people of the larger Mount Kenya region will not have their own political party. This is what Moses Kura is trying to remind these people. That he witnessed President Uru Kenyatta kicking out William Ruto out of Jubilee. So the first thing he's trying to justify the need for more political party. Number two, I also tend to believe that Moses Kuria is actually laying the ground to exit the DP camp. Which begs the question, is Moses Kuria a Trojan horse in William Ruto's camp? 
or is Moses Kuria just someone who is honestly supporting the deputy president, but these people are not appreciating? How do you exit leave Moses, I mean William Ruto's camp? The first step is that if he's joining, if he has his own political party, form your own political party. Moses Kuria did that. The next thing is start opposing that political party. So Moses Kuria is going to counter the UDA party on the ground. So basically, this is going to annoy William Ruto and it's also going to annoy his brigades from the, the, the larger Mount Kenya region. Once that's going to happen, the next thing we'll hear is Moses Kuria trooping back to President Ruto Kenyatta or joining Raila Molodinga because now we'll have a political party. The truth is the DP would not want a situation, and this is the honest truth, a situation where Mount Kenya is divided. And how can you divide Mount Kenya? You can divide Mount Kenya by having those several political parties. Mogi Kyunjuri will win a few seats in uh, Nyeri, maybe in Laikipia. Then Moses Korea will win a few seats in uh, Kiambu, Kirinyaga, something like that. Tiraitu Murungi's party will win other small, small seats there. That will reduce the power and the influence of the UDA. So Moses Korea is just laying the ground to exit. Number three, I think, what Moses Kuria is engaging in is that he's trying to engineer a political contest between himself and William Ruto's allies. The truth is, Rigadi Gashagwa has emerged as Ruto's key points person. For a long time, it was actually Moses Kuria who was seen to be the, the kingpin, I mean, to be the, the points person for the DP. He's been edged out. The DP is now focusing more on the United Democratic Alliance Party. And that's why the recent meetings, Moses Kuria is not featuring. The moment the DP started focusing on UDA, Moses Kuria was not happy. So the thing is, he's now fighting some of these allies. People like Rigadi Gashagwa, people like Imani Ishongwa. Let us wait and see how all these events are going to unfold. And number four, I think Moses Kuria is also trying to incite the locals against the DP. If you listened very closely to what the DP, what uh, Moses Kuria was trying to say, is that nobody is going to stop us from forming a political party. Who has stopped him? The fact that Moses Kuria doesn't have a political party does not mean that the people of the larger Kenya region don't have political parties. If you were to count today, there are probably more political parties in the larger Kenya region than any other part of the country. So it's just trying to incite the people that look here, I supported this guy. Despite supporting him, we've fallen out and there's no need for us to support him. And lastly, which I think is the main thing, is that Moses Korea is also trying now to chart his own political path away from the shadows of President Ru Kenyatta and away from the shadows of the, the deputy president William Ruto. This is going to put him in a position where Moses Kuria will be able to negotiate. He can negotiate with Raila Molodinga that I have my own political party. I'm a party leader. And since I'm a party leader, let us negotiate. He can go to Mudavadi and negotiate with Mudavadi, even for the running mate. Moses Kuria, through his own political party, can negotiate now with Ruto. Because Ruto would not want a situation where Moses Kuria has his team there, someone else, so probably they are going to negotiate. And just like uh, Musalim Dabadi is insisting on the other side that they can only negotiate on equal terms. The moment Moses Kuria has a political party, that means equal terms. I don't know what you think. And by the way, my next video is what next for Amazon Kingi after Raila Molodinga kicked him out of ODM party. And then after that, there is this President Ru Kenyatta's endorsement. The truth of the matter is that President Ru Kenyatta has finally endorsed Raila Amolo Dinga for the presidency. What does it mean? What does that endorsement mean for Raila Amolo Dinga? And what can Raila Amolo Dinga do? What next for Raila Amolo Dinga after that particular endorsement? So I have those ideas, those two video ideas, which I'm likely to do after this particular video. But I want to hear your comments. Or probably if there's something you'd want me to talk about, I'll want to read them in the comments section. 
Thank you guys and for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. Bye-bye.